like if you if you're a long term saver, um, mm -hmm. the the biggest threat you actually have to your savings is is inflation, right? That that is the biggest threat eroding your purchasing power. Mm -hmm. And I think too often investors don't think about um, how do you preserve uh, purchasing power over an extended period of time and how do you reduce volatility related to purchasing power, right? So I think this was this has been actually a very interesting three years because if you're a 60-40 portfolio or, for instance, if you're overweight bonds, let's say you're getting near retirement and you were overweight bonds, you had a double whammy of bonds falling in value and inflation obviously rising substantially in value. Yeah. And you put those two things together and that is, uh, that is killer <laughs> for a portfolio, right? Yeah. Um, and so looking at your savings portfolio and saying, not how do I optimize a nominal return, but how do I minimize the amount of volatility that I'm getting on a long-term real return, I think is very important. So a simple example right now is if I'm thinking about a long-term savings portfolio, and say I'm looking at Treasury inflation protected securities. They're offering a two to you know two point five percent, two to two point five percent yield, real yield that pays that in real terms plus realized inflation. Now, is realized inflation perfect? Of course, it's not perfect. I wouldn't, you know, I, but it's not worth getting too hung up on that. Like if inflation's high, you're going to get paid more, and if inflation's low, then you'll be fine and you'll get that real yield accrual. That's a good asset from a long-term savers portfolio, right? Like, let me tell you, you know, getting a guaranteed or close to guaranteed outcome of a two to two point two five percent real yield over a thirty-year time frame, you know, it's pretty tough to actually beat that. Um, particularly when you think about the risk taking that would have to happen on top of it. Now, you still want to think about like, you know, there's still possibilities that the U.S. government could devalue those bonds in various ways. So you might mm -hmm. want to also hold gold and other assets, commodities and other assets in addition to that. Um, but that's a good example of if you're just thinking about nominal returns, you might say, let me go buy those bonds, those nominal bonds right now. If you're thinking about real returns, and how to reduce real volatility, then you get drawn to assets like gold, tips, commodity, you know, commodity plays, et cetera that are much better at preserving purchasing power. Okay, tips. Um, <clears throat> so I need- Very, yeah, yeah. Tips, nobody talks about them. Yeah, uh, I know, it's like, uh... <laughs> yeah, I feel like maybe we, we need to wake the listener up a little, oh, tips, oh boy, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most well, I, the thing, the thing, the thing with tips, I always, I, I think people, people just don't understand how they, how they work, I think a lot of times, and it's, it seems like, I don't know, so maybe you point. can explain explain to people maybe just briefly how that how they actually uh, function. You know how you're able. Yeah, to... well, I, I think um, I think the challenge with tips is that um, they sound like an inflation protected asset, um, which they are because tips pay you actual realized inflation plus a real yield. That's how they're quoted. That's what they pay. I think the the challenge that most people see with them or experience with them is you think you have a inflation protected security as an example long term tips in the last uh in the last you know 3 years have gone down 40 or 50% and you're like inflation's right. up tips are down i'm confused right. i thought yeah. i was protected from inflation right that's <laughs> exactly that's, but that's because tips are a real bond a real yield bond and so real interest rates have risen so one of the challenges with tips if you go back 3 3 years was the real yield on those assets was negative, meaningfully negative, which means by buying those assets, you were locking in a destruction of your purchasing power. That's a bad asset to buy, just to be blunt. Like, yeah, you know, right. there's lots of ways, for instance, if you just hold cash, cash, like yielding cash, T-bills or the equivalent, you look across countries across time, offers typically offers a modest positive real return uh, across countries across time. So like, why would you buy something that destroys your value in terms of the yield? when you could just hold cash. But what's happened subsequently is that the real yield on those bonds has gone up a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Up to that two to two and a half percent, depending on the day. And because of that, now the expected future return of tips is very different than it was before. And so you're getting that real return on a forward looking basis. And so that's why I think today there are much more compelling asset class from a valuation perspective and from that inflation protection, certainly than they were a few years ago, 
when they were basically locking in terrible returns. Right. And inflation that tips pay, that's CPI year over year. They, yep, yeah. they, pay, they pay printed CPI, which like, look, I, you know, I'm not, not going to say CPI is a perfect instantiation of the inflationary <laughs> pressures of the economy. Like, yeah, I think there's all sorts of reasons why you, why you might um, think that it's imperfect. But it's certainly better mm-hmm. than not getting paid that uh, accumulated uh, return. 